Hi everyone, my name is Arissa and I'm one of the Lantana Chemistry Tutors. So this is our fourth video for acids and bases and today we're going to be looking at the SL subtopic 8.4. So let's get started. So we're going to start off by looking at strong acids. So what is the definition of a strong acid? So strong acids dissociate completely. So they dissociate completely and most importantly, they release H plus ions. So for our dissociation reaction, I'm going to use an example, so HCl. So hydrochloric acid is one example of a strong acid. HCl fully dissociates into H plus and Cl minus. So 100% of HCl exists as ions when you have an actual solution of HCl. So note that I've used a direct arrow. We'll come back to that slightly later. So a couple of other examples of strong acids include nitric acid, which is HNO3, sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and also phosphoric acid, which is h 3 PO4. So all of these dissociate completely into their ions. So now let's look at weak acids. So by definition then, weak acids only dissociate partially into H plus ions. Let's put H plus ions like that. Examples of weak acids include all our organic acids, so your carboxylic acids, and um, main examples include ethanoic acid. Another example that you often see is also carbonic acid. So carbonic acid is H2CO. Three. So essentially, anything with a carbon in it, we consider these organic acids, and therefore we regard these as weak acids. If we were to look now at the dissociation reaction, so for example, for ethanoic acid, we have CH3COOH, and now I'm going to have equilibrium arrows. The reason I'm going to have equilibrium arrows rather than I than a direct arrow is because there's still going to be a backward reaction because there hasn't been complete dissociation. So it's going to go backwards and forwards. So now most of the acid is actually undissociated and quite a small amount of it has actually uh, dissociated. So that's the main distinction between a strong acid and a weak uh, acid. So now let's look at bases. So if we do the exact same thing. So and um, by definition, a strong base, like before, dissociates completely. Dissociates completely or fully dissociates. Um, and this time it's going to release uh, OH minus ions. And examples include hydroxides of group one and group two metals. Group one and group two metals. So a main example here, really commonly encountered one in the IV is sodium hydroxide, but anything in group one and group two that forms a hydroxide, we would regard that as strong as well. So now for our dissociation reaction, so NaOH, and that is going to have a direct arrow into Na plus and OH minus. So again, 100% would exist as the ionic form. In terms of weak bases, they're going to dissociate partially as we saw with weak acids earlier. Examples of weak bases include ammonia, so ammonia which is going to be NH3, and also anything that's got an amine functional group. So an amine functional group, and you learn more about the amines when it comes to organic chemistry. So whenever you see these two, uh, two things, you know that they're going to be weak bases. Unfortunately, you don't really need to know the dissociation reaction for weak bases, so we'll kind of skip over that. But the main principle is that they dissociate partially, and so in theory, we would also be using the equilibrium arrows as well. So 
hypothetical scenario. So let's say we're in a lab and I give you two beakers, such as you can see here, and I tell you that one of these beakers is HCl and the other one is ethanoic acid. So they look the same, they've got the same volume, no smell, they're clear, and I ask you to do a series of experiments to tell me which one is which. So what can you do? So the most obvious answer is you can use a pH probe uh, to determine the pH of either. So the one with a lower pH is going to be HCl. And you can also use the universal indicator. When it comes to answering a paper two question, I sort of never really encourage you to use that one because it's a bit of a cheat. Um, we'll have a look at more appropriate answers now. The other thing that you can do is use reactions involving metals, metal carbonates, and bases to tell you which one is the strong acid. So this is coming from topic 8.3, so we've already done a video um, on that. So when acids react with metals, they release hydrogen. When they react with metal carbonates, they release carbon dioxide. And when they react with bases, they form salt and water, so you can't really see any bubbling there, but here they release heat. So essentially, you could drop, for example, whoops, you could drop a strip of magnesium into both of these beakers, and HCl, what you'd notice, would be more vigorous bubbling because both of them are gonna react with magnesium to release hydrogen, but HCl is gonna react a lot quicker because remember, HCl is going to exist mostly as ions. So those ions are what's gonna react with your magnesium to release your bubbles of hydrogen. So over here, we're using the rates of reaction to tell us which one is the strong acid and which one is the weak acid. So let's look at the last one then. So the last thing that we can look at is electrical conductivity. So remember that electricity is conducted by ions, conducted by free moving ions rather. So HCl, because as we saw earlier, it's gonna exist completely as ions, it's going to conduct much more electricity. So you would notice that the beaker with HCl conducts more electricity. Okay, good. So whenever you're asked in an IV how you can differentiate the two, I'd always encourage you to go for either the second or the third option. So let's have a look at some past paper questions then. So I've taken this from paper one in 2017, and they're asking you which solution has the highest pH. So a high pH means we're looking for a strong base. So let's look at these in turn. Ammonium chloride is a salt, so that's not going to be it. Sulfuric acid is an acid. Sodium chloride is going to be also a salt. And ammonia is going to be a weak base. So even though we started off looking for a strong base, based on our four answers, the most appropriate answer for highest pH is actually going to be ammonia, because that's going to be basic. Okay, let's look at another question then. So this is from paper two, whoopsie, forgive that typo, that's paper two um, from 2018, so question number five. And so they're talking about lime scale or calcium carbonate reacting with ethanoic acid, which is CH3COOH. So you're asked to predict, giving a reason, so you have to explain your answer, a difference between the reactions of the same concentrations of hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid, so CH3COOH. Okay, so remember that HCl is a strong acid, while CH3COOH is a weak acid. So the difference is that you're going to notice more vigorous bubbling with HCl, and the reason is because HCl has fully dissociated into its ions. 
So remember, this vigorous bubbling is going to come from the release of carbon dioxide, which is what we saw earlier. So a carbonate and an acid always releases carbon dioxide, salt and water. The next bit, dissolved carbon dioxide causes unpolluted rain to have a pH of approximately 5 and other dissolved gases can result in a much lower pH. State 1, environmental effect of acid rain. So this is coming into territory of 8.5, but I just thought we'd cover it here. So one of the main effects of acid rain is that it kind of destroys aquatic life. So that's an easy one marker for you to have over there as well. Oops. Okay, so last bit of questioning then. Oops, I almost forgot. I put in the mark scheme for you here as well, just so you can see how your answers compare. Let me move that over a little bit. Okay, let's have a look at the next bit of questions that you can get. So I've decided to look at a couple of um, stoichio, sorry, I can never say that word, stoichiometry questions as well, because they're the other types of questions that you can get with acids and bases. So let's have a look. So now we're talking about calcium carbonate is added to separate solutions of hydrochloric and ethanoic acid of the same concentration. One similarity and one difference in the observation you make. Really similar to the question we saw earlier. So the similarity is for both of them, we notice bubbling. Right? They're both going to release um, carbon dioxide. But remember not to say carbon dioxide because we're talking about a qualitative observation. So you don't know that it's carbon dioxide. Technically, you can only see a gas being evolved. And the difference is that the carbon dioxide um, is going to have more vigorous bubbling. All right, so let's kind of see this question through. Um, so write an equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and calcium carbonate. So I know that I'm going to make a salt uh, and then I'm going to make carbon dioxide and I'm going to make water. My salt is always a metal and a non-metal, so CaCl2 to balance out the charges. And because I've got two chlorines here, I'm going to put a two in front of my HCl over there. And that's going to be my balanced reaction. So moving on to the trickier stuff. So let's do a couple of calculations. So determine the volume of 1.5 moles per decimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid that would react with exactly 1.25 grams of calcium carbonate. So when you've got questions on reactions like this, the first thing we always look at is we look to calculate the moles. And here I can calculate the moles of calcium carbonate by using the mass over molar mass formula. So the mass is going to be 1.25 grams. And I'm going to get the molar mass from combining um, all the different relative atomic masses of the atoms in calcium carbonate. And I've included a periodic table here. So essentially we'd be adding calcium, uh, oops, sorry, one, oops, gosh, whoopsies, one carbon and three oxygens. And that would give me a total mass of 100.09. So if I pop that into my calculator really quickly, that's going to give me moles of 0 0.0125. Good. So that's the moles of calcium carbonate. Earlier, I saw that essentially, oops, let me just go back a slide. Earlier, I saw that the moles of hydrochloric acid are going to be twice as many as my moles of calcium carbonate. So for my moles of HCl, I'm going to multiply 0 0.0125 by 2, and I'm going to get 0 0.02 five moles. And last but not least, now I can work out volume. And the formula that I'm going to use now comes from the NCV triangle, whereby V is going to equal to the number of moles over the concentration. So N is going to be 0 0.025. My concentration is going to be 1.5. And that is going to get me, if I put it into my calculator really quickly, 0 0.025 divided by 1.5, that's going to get me 0 0.0167 decimeters cubed. Perfect, so that's how you work that one out. And last but not least, let's have a look at your last question. 
Oops, I've kind of gone over a little bit. So now you're being asked for the volume of a gas measured at standard conditions, which would be produced when 1.25 grams of calcium carbonate reacts completely with the hydrochloric acid. So we saw earlier that my moles of calcium carbonate from the previous question, this is going to be 0 0.0125. Based on that, I can also work out the moles of CO2. It's going to be exactly the same number because they react in a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, sorry, as in CO2 is produced um, in the same quantity in terms of the molar ratios as we saw from the balanced equation earlier. So I've got my moles of CO2 there. The formula that you've got to use now, though, is um, a slightly different one. So the moles of a gas equal to the volume over the molar volume. And molar volume is a value that you can get from your data booklet, which is 22.7. So if I was to flip this equation around, volume would equal to the number of moles multiplied by your molar volume. And that would give you, if I pop that into a calculator uh, really quickly, 22.7 that would give you 0 0.28375 decimeters cubed. Perfect. Okay, so that was a little bit of um, stoichiometry alongside acids and bases. And that brings us to the end of our session today. I've also included the answers over there for you to have a look at as well. So do have a look at that in your own time. And um, so always remember, so we're here to help. So if you do require extra help, we've got one-to-one -one support with OPT, online tuition, and we also have revision courses a number of times a year. So thanks for tuning in, everybody.